Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my happy place. Today is Friday, September 17th, and today's episode is the remix block number seven, which is for the month of September. Now my remix blocks I always do with my So Simple Shapes, giving you different ideas so that you can think outside of the block, outside of the box, and yes, outside of the blocks, why not? <laughs> of normally what I designed my shapes for, for going with the quilt. I wanted to show you that you can use them for other things and you can get the pattern and instructions the third Friday of every month. I do my filming then because the third Wednesday of every month is when Riley Blake puts the pattern or basically what the pattern is, this is so simple shapes they'll tell you in their newsletter. So make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter. You will get that in your email the third Wednesday of every month. I will leave a link here in the video description and so that you can sign up for that if you have not. And then again, like I say, the following Friday, I will do a tutorial on how I make that remix block. So um, today's remix blocks is from my granny's garden, So Simple Shape Set. I've been waiting to do this for these to come back into stock and now they're back in stock and so I'm super happy about that because this is a big set that has a lot of different possibilities in it and um, so I will show you a picture of the granny's garden quilt here maybe a little you know a little slideshow or something to show you what that quilt looked like so that you can see the shapes and the quilt that they made and become familiar with those because then you can see how different these look. So what I did was I took this shape right here, which is I-25, okay? Now obviously you can just lay this on a piece of my interfacing, trace it like this, and sew around, you know, a piece of fabric and get this flower shape, right? But I designed this so that it has eight different petals and it ends up looking like a rounded Dresden 
as well. And how you do that is you sew the block into a pinwheel first, and then you lay the shape on. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So for this shape right here, again, it's I-25 of my granny's garden. And what you're need, going to need to start out with is five inch squares. That's kind of what I started out with. I have, you know, just a container here that I have a lot of leftover from um, five inch stackers, charm packs, whatever. And so I grabbed these for this size. And what I did was I trimmed them down to four and three quarters because I didn't want to be using the little um, pinked edge for those um, because of how we're going to sew this. So I wouldn't go any smaller than that. I wouldn't go down to four and a half inches. I just trim them down to four and three quarters if you want to do that. And I have already sewn some of the half square triangles just to get a little bit ahead. But what I do is I, um, let me set that there, is four of these Four of these squares will make one of these Dresdens, okay? But because I wanted a different one for each blade, then I grabbed eight squares instead, and then I just pair them up. And then that means I'll get two Dresden. With eight squares, I'll get two of these Dresdens. And if you look closely um, to these, you can see that I use 16 squares for these and then I just kind of mixed them up so they don't look all the same. And so that's a good hint to use if you're doing a table runner or a quilt or a pillow or something that you're going to make a lot of the same size. And this is a great way to use up your scraps and use up the squares in your scrappy stash, which is what I have done. And so I know that I have told you in the past that I'm gonna show you how to use this other line right here on my seam so easy guide. So the center line is when we're doing easy corner triangles. And this line right here is your quarter inch seam allowance that I used to when I'm sewing an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, which is hopefully all the time. And this line right here is when I'm taking two squares and putting them right sides together. And I don't have to mark this and I'm going to be getting two half square triangles by sewing a quarter inch away from each point. And so how I do that is instead of following this center line on my corner like this, when you're doing easy corner triangles, I'm going to be following this line. So I take my corner right here and I line up with this line and I just, and it doesn't have to be completely accurate, but you want to use that as your guide. And I start sewing right there and I can kind of peek and see where that line is and you know, come a little bit forward so you can see where that's going to be coming up as soon as I sew that far, okay? So this is what I mean by I'm taking this corner and I'm just following that line right there. And this is the far left line. And because I like to chain piece, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two at the same time, and I'm gonna get four half square triangles out of both of these squares, two half square triangles from each one. And then I'm just gonna start on that far left line again, start sewing, keeping my fabric flat. Okay, then I'll just clip this. And now, let's see which side, can you see my thread lines? Can you see my thread mm -hmm. lines pretty good there which, which, where I stitched? What I'm gonna do is flip that over and I'm gonna take this corner, so my where I already stitched is on this side, I'm gonna line up again on this left line on the corner and sew again. That way I'm sewing half of an inch apart without having to mark my fabric and it's pretty fast. And I'm just gonna do the, same, whoop, do the same thing with this. Flip it around, my stitching is on this side. And start right there. Okay, I'll just wrap the fabric there so I don't waste thread. 
I've clipped these apart. Now they're sewn a half an inch apart. Can you see that? That's okay. I come over here and I just set my stitches real quick so they're nice and flat. And then I will just cut them apart. They're already sewn, so you know there's no special cutting. You can use a rotary cutter to do this. I've just got my scissors right here, so I just grab them, cut them apart. And again, these are either five inch squares or four and three quarters. And then I will take this over here and I will press my seams open. I especially want my seams open for this because I want my, my applique to lie as flat as possible. One thing, and then I'll put the, the quilter's clapper on there. One thing you can do at this point, speaking of points, is you can take and clip your points like this. You know, your little dog ears. You can clip those off so that when you open that and press it open, you don't have to clip them separately like this. So there's your two options that way. So let me just hurry and press these open. I'm gonna go ahead and clip these like this and like this. And I'm not clipping into the thread where the corner is right there. I'm just starting my clip right on the corner, okay? Now these are ready to press open. I'm gonna have to replace the fabric in this, on this ironing board. It's been quite a while since I've been using it. You can see it's getting a little bit, little teeny bit discolored, but guess what? My new decorator weight fabric prints just came in, so I'm gonna be doing that. Maybe by next week I'll have it replaced when I'm filming, we'll see. So I'm just gonna cover it up with another decorator weight fabric, and I have shown you the tutorial on how I DIY my own ironing board covers, so. Can't wait to use one of my new prints and put on top of here. All right, so I've got these, and because I didn't clip those, see, that's why I usually like to do it when they're closed. It just saves time, so I don't have to do four clips. Okay, so now you can see that I have two half square triangles that all look the same. These are the ones that I did previously, okay? And now all I'm going to do is, um, here, I'll just take four away for right now and save those for when I make another one. When I make uh, more of the half square triangles in this size so that I can mix these up so that I don't, don't get two Dresdens looking exactly the same. Now what I'm gonna do is lay these out in a pinwheel. So let me pull this up a little bit more. And so when you're laying out for a pinwheel, you just want your seam lines to go this way and then turn, I think I like it like that. Your seam lines on that one going this way, okay? And then you're gonna end up having your pinwheel and all you have to do is sew these two together, these two together, and then sew this, and I'm going to be pressing my seams open. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly.
All right, so I'm just waiting for this to cool down and this clapper will allow it to, when it's cooled down, it's flatter. And you can see that I used my seam roller for those bulky seams in the center. And I just kind of do that first before I press it. And that really comes in handy. I use this a lot for that. And now we've got a pinwheel, okay? Now, when you're making this pinwheel, it doesn't matter if this, this edge lines up perfectly or this one, you really am trying to pay more attention to the center here because those edges are going to be, you know, cut off because you can see that it's a round shape. So, what I'm going to do is I grab my shape, which I've already pre-done and traced around it with a pencil onto my sewing interfacing, okay? And because this is already traced, all I need to do is take these little cleavage areas right here and line up with all the seams and they should line up pretty dang good. Okay, if you want to at this point, you can pin it. I really usually don't but I'm gonna put a couple of pins in just so that, you know, they don't slip, just to be sure. Because of course, you know, because I'm doing this on camera the one time they would slip or would not slip would be here on camera. Now, before I do that, I may pin and unpin because I can see that this line is a little bit farther over here. So I'm gonna unpin this and shift it, meaning I want the point, the inside point, to go right on that seam. And you can kind of manipulate that. Okay, that's better. That lines up that way. That's on all the points. It may help to, let's bring it over here, sis, to show it like in a sunny window so you can really see what's lined up. This one is not right here. So all I'm gonna do is line it up with my finger by pulling my thumb over there and pin it because you do have a little bit of leeway. And then as you're sewing, I just make sure that I can see that and these remain open and flat on the back, okay? And then I'm just gonna sew this just like any regular Sew Simple shape. I'm just gonna come in. My stitch um, might be a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna sew right on the line all the way around. And as I come to here, I'm gonna, you know, this point is right on that seam, so I'm not gonna have to worry about that. But as I come around, if I see that it's not, all you have to do is just kind of shift that. And it doesn't matter if it bunches up a little bit here, or if it's a little bit tighter, because it'll all, it'll all come out. All right, so now I've got to um, sew, gotten to where I started and I over, you know, I have over sewn about an inch to set that seam. And then I'm just gonna sew right off the edge. Onto my scrap of fabric. Let me put my pins away and my cute little pin cushion truck over here. I also have a tutorial where I showed you how I make those. All right, so here I have this sewn and I have manipulated so that, see how this point, the drawn point is off a little bit here on the seam, but I actually did sew on the seam there and then start to pivot. So that's what I love about cotton fabric and doing this, you can manipulate it a little bit if you need to. But as far as I can see, as well as my eyes can see, I've got the point starting right in there and my seams are still open and I've got enough that I can clip an approximate quarter inch seam allowance all the way around and so that's what I'm gonna do next.
Okay, so now I've got that trimmed. And because these are all cleavage areas and also where a seam is, that kind of makes it easy to clip. I'm just gonna take these and clip from the front and clip right to where my threads are, right there, not past my threads. And I know it's a little scary, but you want to clip right to those threads. And I'm going through like three different layers of fabric because of those seam allowance folds, but you can do it. I, I do recommend using small scissors for this so you can see exactly what you're doing. And if you have to, you know, put on some readers or something like that so you can see exactly where you're stitching to. And this will allow it to lie flat when you've turned it right side out. Okay, I've got all of those clipped. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is pull these apart or use a seam ripper, how I've shown you in the past. And what I'd like to do is just start a little clip there so that I can make a little bit bigger of an X right there. Doesn't have to be super neat, it needs to be about that large. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right side out very gently and then I'll use my fingers to kind of push out those curves it's a larger larger curves and a larger piece so I can easily use my fingers to do that and then that's what it looks like at that point and then I'll take this point to point turner and shape my curves interfacing side to me, fabric out, and I'm actually just using the tip of this to go onto the fabric, not the interfacing. I'm not in the seam allowance. I'm actually just pushing out gently on the fabric as I'm coming around like this. And I usually do it like about two or three times on each curve because I'm pushing very gently. We don't wanna poke a hole. But again, if you do poke a hole, you can take that Sioux glue, like I've showed you how to fix that in other of my So Simple Shape series videos. You can take that Sioux glue and put right on those little raggedy um, edges, those little threads that are sticking out after you've poked a hole through, <laughs> kind of put the glue on that and then tuck over to the back side, And that works pretty good. You know, I've done that a time or two, so that's how I know how to fix those. Now you can see right here, I probably needed to clip just a little teeny bit more, but I think that'll make it, that'll make it, I can make it work just by pushing out that fabric and rounding it. Okay, so that should be pretty good to go. At this point, let's move that for a second. I do kind of like to press these real quick on the edges because I'm cotton has a memory and so I'm just giving that kind of a quick press and that's not going to go away. You know what I mean when you've creased cotton. It's you're gonna have to iron it to get that little crease out. So once I've done those edges, yeah that's pretty flat, but it's even going to be flatter. And I take it over here and I'll just put my iron down in the center and kind of come from the center out. just press those down. Let's see, let's use the longer clappers. Maybe a long one in the center, a short one on the sides. And then let that cool for just a minute. So while that's cooling, um, let's clean this up just a little bit. And I wanted to show you what I used for the center, which is I-21. You see that? I-21. <laughs> How many places can I move it? I-21, which is a one and a quarter inch circle. Now you can use any size circles for the center of these. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'm going to go over to the work table and I'm going to give you different options for centers for these. 
but I thought it would be really fun to use this circle that's in the set and um, do them in red. And then I didn't use a lot of red fabric or any solid red, I should say, fabric for these um, little Dresdens because I wanted this red to really pop. And so that's what I did for those. So for that, for these size flowers, I'm using the I-21 and, okay, what's happened to my big shape that I've shown you several times. Here it is. Again, that's I-25. All right, but this should be cool by now. Let's take it out and look at it. So fun, so easy. These are a great size. They're bigger pieces, great to um, turn. So use your um, five inch leftover squares and to make a quilt, runners, pillows, whatever, just anything that you can apply these on. I noticed that on the Rite Blake website, they um, applicate one of these onto some toweling. Stacy from Buttermilk Basin is, who is also a uh, an awesome designer and she designs for Riley Blake as well and she has some new toweling out and so they put did kind of like a fall looking one and put it on some toweling and that's really cute so you might want to go over to their blog and check that out or on their Instagram so in this set let me pull these in I know I've just focused on this size but in this set I actually designed four of these for this size that you can do the same thing with and this is the largest one so that's I-25 and here's I-24 see these work well together you can just line up those dots there in the center and you can do fun little things with that here is I-23 and here is I-22 Okay, these are all the exact same shape, just four different sizes. And what I did with those is for the I-24, I saw this other one. Look how cute that is in that size. And I just do the exact same thing. This is what the other one looked like because again, I did eight. I started out with eight squares because I wanted it to be scrappy. So that's what that looks like. I just laid that on there after tracing it and did the exact same thing, all right? And again, those, oh, I didn't tell you what size squares. You need to use three and a half inch squares for those. So I just grabbed my bin of three and a half inch squares, grabbed some and did the exact same way following this far left line so that I'm sewing a half inch on a wide apart quarter inch on each side and I end up with this size of pinwheel which is easy for that size okay so that's the I-24 three and a half inch squares for that okay now for the I-23 which is the next shape right here I use two and a half inch squares so here on this design board Got my two and a half inch square bin somewhere else doing something else with that, but I grabbed some of my two and a half inch squares and did that the exact same way. So on it exactly like that. And that's what that cute little one looked like right there. And just traced it on there. And that's a good size for that. All right, that's what that one looks like. And those are two and a half inch squares. So this is three and a half, two and a half. And for this little bitty cute one right here, which I think is so cute, that's tiny. I use two inch squares for that. So I grab my two inch square bin that I've got here, two inch. I have a lot of two inch squares because that's a pretty, um, pretty good size that I trim off of my easy corner triangles. Um, when I'm using like my four and a half inch size or something that I trim off, I can always cut a two inch square. And so I don't know why I have those separate in a bag, but so I've got that bin. You could use one and a half, but they're pretty fiddly. I, I just went ahead and used the two inch squares for that. 
And so that's what that little pinwheel looks like. Notice that those don't line up exactly in the center because it's smaller and more bulky. And that one doesn't isn't exactly quite in the center either. But remember, we're always putting a circle or something over it. But speaking of this, you might not want to make a whole quilt out of these because they're smaller, but look how cute that would be if I just poked a hole right there in the center, maybe took some sharp scissors, poked a hole right here in the center and used a little bit of fray check to stop that from fraying. And then I could put that under my little spool for a cute little Dresden. I could even do that size too, right there. That'd be fun. And so, but these small ones are really cute to do, you know, for smaller blocks, for smaller appliques, for, you know, little accents on patchwork project bags or whatever you want to do. Or if you're just doing little mini quilts, obviously. But, you know, as you get larger sizes, it's easier, easier to manipulate. And um, they're all just as easy to do, but using larger fabric pieces is always a little bit easier. So I just wanted to show you those and those sizes right there. I just think they're really fun. And now I wanna go over to the table and show you different options um, that we can do the centers in. But I did also want to say that I'm sure it's obvious to you, but I just kinda of wanted to point it out that you could just do these in two colors. You could do this red and white, blue and white. You would just um, use a background and then a red, a background and a red, you know, that kind of thing. So you don't have to do it scrappy, but you know, I'm always showing you how I sew for my stash and um, these are really fun to do that way. All right, so let's go over to the table and I'll talk about, you know, a few different ideas on how to put the centers on these. All right, so here I am back over here at the work table. And so obviously I showed you that you can use the small little circle from the set for the centers, but you can also, the easiest change would be just to do a larger circle. So um, I do have my circle rulers here, two inch, four inch and six inch that I just had some leftovers already sewn and then I sewed up a few too, just so that I could show you what the six inch one looks like, okay? So this is one I already had sewn for my flea market quilt. So that's what it would look like if you did a large circle. I probably should have sewn one in red so you could really see that, but that's kind of what it would look like. And then you would just have tiny little petals. Then you would kind of have room maybe to put another circle in the center. You know, that'd be kind of cute. But just, I just love how it shows the different looks when you do things differently. So what about if you did the same size in six inch, but you did the background. Let me grab, so I've got these squares of uh, my B backgrounds, which would be perfect for the backgrounds and this size for a quilt. So let me throw this on here. And then if you used the same background and did a center circle, look what that looks like. And then that's open that you could put something like um, this star right here. This is from my Be Happy set. You could put a star in the centers. Okay. And Let's see, I did several size stars. This one might be too small. Okay, so this is a good time to tell you this. Okay, so this star, D14, is for my Be Happy set. But these two star, stars, F15 and F14, are for my Autumn Love. But see how nicely they all go together? I do that on purpose so that you can stack stars if you need to for different things. So just kind of be aware of that. Kind of you can cross over and play with my shapes together and they'll do different things. So look at that. You could also do, I don't know, maybe I would put, this one's for my four inch ruler, put that there and add a star. There's just a lot of different things you could do. These smaller ones I'll probably use with, you know, like the smaller little Dresden flowers like this. But first I'm just gonna 
show you options from the large. So also, I've got this heart F19 from Autumn Love. That'd be super cute in there. I've got this from my Be Happy, the D27. That's just a different shaped heart. I have several hearts and several sets. Okay, you could do that. So if you're using a larger circle, it just gives you a bigger background to work with. You can put flowers and everything like that on there, like I, I did it with my um, Granny's Garden Quilt. But if you didn't want a background circle that big with the six inch ruler, you could use the four inch ruler Put that in the center, switch out the matching. I mean, they wouldn't even have to match, but switch out the matching background. It just kind of gives you the illusion after, after everything's quilted, your block is quilted in a quilt, pillow, runner, whatever. When this is down, it gives you the illusion that you went and did kind of English paper piece these or whatever. And so that's kind of cool. So that's what that looks like with that circle, with that star in the center, this star in the center, this cute little bitty star in the center, with this taller heart in the center, or this wider. I mean, I guess you could get crazy fancy and put another little Dresden inside there, right? And put a little red at center there. That'd be cute. Another thing is this is from um, I-26. This is from Granny's Garden set, and I did that in red. You could put that on there and then use like a yellow center, let's see. So I have this bag that I have left over. Um, so simple shapes from a long time ago that I keep in here. So sometimes I'll just grab, like look, you could put that, and look, that looks like tiny little rickrack because we did that yellow center, or you could take that off and just put it right there lining up all the intersections there so that you know it's centered. I really like how that looks. These are all different size circles that are from my So Simple Shapes, not necessarily from my rulers. Look at that background right there. That's cute. It just looks like a little rickrack. And then, you know, you can put another little center in there or this little red center in there. I don't know, there's just a lot of different possibilities. Now, all you have to do is, you know, here's the binder that I keep my So Simple Shapes in, but remember, this is a free download of all of the cutting guides, but it gives you a glance at what each shape looks like in each set, so you can kind of get an idea and go through and say, oh, wow, look at that, and the Be Happy D26 is a flower. That might be really cute there in the center or something like that. Or I could do this bluebird with the little wing on it and put the larger background center right here and put a bluebird inside of it. So there's a lot of different possibilities that way. Let's um, move this one off and just kind of see like, look how cute that would be. It just it might be a little too big, but that's kind of fun. I don't know. I kind of like it when it's big like that with the background with just a little trim around there. And then you can put smaller things in there. It's just kind of fun to experiment. And again, I just did the hearts and stars and circles, but... Um, there's so many more different possibilities. This one, because it's so tiny, we'll just do like the little red circle. Let's see, this is my two inch circle ruler. Let's see what we can do with that. Maybe the little star fits in there, I don't know. Not really, that kind of overlaps it. Probably just a, another circle there. I'll put that there and double up on the circles. 
it a gingham circle. That's really fun. So that's what I do when I'm kind of playing with things like that. One other option might be really cute to show you is this one right here. Let me line that up so it's centered. Can you see that, sis? Let me mm -hmm. slide it over more. Put that there and then bring the gingham circle in. That's cute too. And you can do that on any of these. They're all the scrappy, happy look. Anyway, I'm assuming that because you're a quilter and you're watching this video that you like to play with fabrics and different shapes. And so that's kind of what I'm, what I love to do. Once I do a basic shape and I'm just kind of moving things around and deciding you know, what looks best. I think it would be really fun to, let's put this on here again, and take these shapes right here and, and cut this probably nine and a half inches, the background, so down from 10 inches. And then I would cut like, um, if I was making a bunch of blocks like this to put together for a quilt, I could use those for the centers or just these little ones or use this bigger one or um, again use the background one but it would be really fun to do cut like three inch squares or two and a half inch squares and do easy corner triangles in scrappy here and when you sew your blocks together it looks like a round background and I've done that several times and that's pretty fun so I just kind of wanted to give you a lot of different options on what you want to do with this cute little September remix block and there's a lot of fun shapes in this granny's garden so I'm happy it's back in stock and again it's super easy to just make these pinwheels and using that method with my seam so easy guide there on my machine without any marking and just sew up a bunch and have fun with them and so like I'm having fun with them and play all day in your sewing room and decide what you want to do and how many projects you want to do with this. So thank you so much for joining me today in my happy place and I will see you next week with a new video and I'll chat with you later.